Hi there. Taming the Taimanov is not a particularly impressive trap at all, and White compromises too much in order to try and get this trap rolling. Indeed, the great Aaron Nimzovich with the white pieces lost out to Perlis in 1905. E4 and the Sicilian with c5. Knight f3 is met by e6. And rather than play d4 immediately, first c4, a Maroxi bind type of move, establishing pawns on c4 and e4. Black plays knight c6, white knight c3. And after knight f6, d4 takes and knight takes. So we have a Timonoff or a four knight variation of the Sicilian. I'm not quite sure where one starts and the other ends. But here black plays bishop b4. White here chooses to trade on c6, which is fine. Knight takes on c6, b takes on c6. And white perhaps should play bishop d3 here with a round equality. If instead e5 hitting at the knight, that knight's jumping in to e4. And the idea of allowing a pin on c3 is nothing new when white can play queen g4 getting at g7. So this is not, uh, not a novel idea. Queen g4 hitting at g7 allows knight takes on c3. The idea being that white tries a3, driving the bishop back, and then a capture on g7. But black's doing fine here with a move like queen a5, or even bishop back to f8 with clear advantage for black. If instead, though, the bishop retreats to a5, then white now has the upper hand with queen takes on g7, hitting the rook. And after rook f8, now b4 hitting the bishop again. The bishop's going back to b6 or to c7. Here we're looking at bishop back to c7. But white will continue with bishop g5 hitting at the queen. White's answer to this is going to be bishop takes on e5, figuring that black is still in the game after queen takes on e5, and then f6, getting the piece back, forking the queen and the bishop. But rather than queen takes on e5, white has better queen takes on f8, not particularly too difficult to see, forcing king takes on f8, and now after bishop takes on d8, white is clearly ahead. So this is called Taming the Taimanov in the Sicilian. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.